Greetings, everybody, and welcome to another installment of Innovation Crush. I'm going to have to sound cooler on this episode than I usually do. <laughs> yeah, so what's up? Yo, it's DJ Ski in the house. What up? That, that was a little funk flex for me. Just there you go. You're, yeah. you're killing it, Drew. Yeah, yeah, no, I, this is, this, that's pretty much it. I, I'm <laughs> sending it to all the radio stations. Um, hey, guys, in case you're tuning in for the first time, this is Innovation Crush, a show where we talk about all things uh, innovation, ideas, creativity, uh, amazing people doing amazing things. And um, the DJ Ski joke was not a joke at all. Hello. What's uh, up, DJ? buddy? How are you? I'm good, man. How are you doing? All is good, man. Everything's um, amazing. Yeah, you're, you're a fairly positive man. Only every, way to be, right? Every time, yeah, every time. It's pleasant. It's pleasant to encounters with you. You have two options. You can be positive or negative. Why be negative? That's true. That's true. Doesn't help. There's no middle. I guess not. Really? I mean, hmm. you can be kind of bland, but I mean, yeah. you generally neutral. you're going to have a positive you can be or neutral. kind of. <laughs> I mean, you're always going to, it's like half full or half empty. Um, it's perspective. Is it Scott? Ski? Like, where did, what, what's, what happens? Both. Because like, I don't know when like DJs graduate out of their DJ name or Both. if they ever do. Both. You know, like I saw Grandmaster Kaz the other day. I was like, well, <laughs> you just go by Fred now. Like it's nobody. Either one. Not anything but DJ. It's funny because people always, half the time, still call me, hey, DJ, hey. Hey, hey DJ. Because <laughs> they'll see that. And some people still think it's my name, I think, which is weird. But So small story. Even though the episode is about you, I'm going to tell you a story about me. Please, go for it. Um, I had a DJ company for a little while. And we uh, One of our, our big break was when we uh, we hosted Spring Break in Jamaica for a while. Nice. And the, the I'm... That's awesome. I'm the best man in my buddy's wedding who, mm-hmm. like, it, the, we started that company together a long time ago. But he, we were in Jamaica. He was getting punked by a couple of dudes on the, they're like, hey, DJ, play some golf, <laughs> daddy. So, like, to this day, like, every time I see him, I'm like, hey, DJ, <laughs> play some golf, daddy. That's how it always is, right? Um, you got to put adjust the levels on that. I know I yelled. Uh, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> 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 All right, so people who may not know uh, Ski, no DJ. Um, what, let, let's give the 90 second version of who you are, you know, um, how you are self, de- how you self describe your, yourself. Oh, I don't know. Uh, yourself. Yeah, that makes sense. I just like to do cool things with good people at the end of the day. I mean, radio DJ, TV host, sports fan, sneaker collector, entrepreneur, travel, I don't know, <laughs> DJ, <laughs> a bunch, a bunch of different things. Nice. Um, uh, and I'm not big on labels. I like doing a lot of different things. So it's tough to just like say, oh, you're just, because it's funny. Oh, you're a DJ or you're just a DJ. And I'm like, yeah, kind of. But there's yeah, a lot more that goes to that. That's an interesting thing, though. Like, and I think that's a topic that comes up often is like personal brand, right? And yeah. it's like, and especially if you're a real multi hyphenate, you might be different people to different, you know, in Absolutely. a different room, like from morning to noon to night For sure. on a weekly basis. For sure. And it's all still you. It's not like you're trying to force and, and do different things. It just kind of comes, comes natural with that, but there's different elements. It's not like, oh, yes, you like one type of food, but that doesn't mean, you know, you just eat, yeah, you like a, you like a variety. <laughs> right. Um, how do you go about overcoming, and I'm, I'm sure by now, like, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, but like, how do you overcome the, like, maybe a stigma or like, oh, DJ, or like, just kind of putting you in a box, uh, you know, what's that process like when you have a conversation with somebody, you're like, no, 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 it's, it's kind of a big deal Look, it's, in a uh, humble way. It's funny. It's always like your greatest strengths or your greatest weaknesses. So the same thing that gets me in a lot of doors is, is what I've built on my DJ career and that brand. At the same time, though, that can also hinder you because especially when you, you get into certain elements of the business world or doing, you know, raising money for companies and people are like he's just a DJ he doesn't like he's just doing it and he doesn't really it's like no like yes but right. no so it's like it's great that it can get you into those things but it can also hurt you at the same time because people will tend to, to I guess kind of sleep on you in a weird way and, and, and just assume that oh he just knows music he doesn't really know understand business or he's just kind of here because of who he is but not really understand you know the full depth of, of what you do so yeah you know, it's, a, it's, it's one of those challenges that you definitely have to fight through and, and overcome and one of the stigmas that we face. Um, so let's, let's talk about the multi-hyphenation for a second, mm-hmm. right? Ski TV, um, mm-hmm. what you, the three billion uh, yeah, had a lot views. of views. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's crazy. Mean, it was just you just hitting repeat on the <laughs> Exactly, dude. We like, just I got, get these views up. We got a, we just, I just got like, one of those ducks that refreshes, hits the refresh button on the uh, <laughs> Exactly. On the or like, a little, like, a, yeah. Yeah, like a Rube Goldberg machine. Yes, if you will. exactly. Um, so no, so let, let's, I mean, kind of just mm-hmm. brag a little bit on the resume, right? Like you've got Ski TV, Dash mm-hmm. Radio just 
launch. Congratulations Thank on you. that. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, just explain what Dash Radio is because I so think that's pretty With awesome. Dash, I mean, if you look at the foundation of everything I've done, it's been from, from DJing. I mean, the reason I moved out here is because I was a DJ on radio and I was 16 and worked my way up to ultimately, you know, a lot of people heard me for the first time on Sirius, on, on Kiss FM, and iHeart Radio. And uh, with Dash, we've basically built, you know, the what we think is the best radio platform for the future. So... This time where everybody's focused on the streaming music space, you have Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, et cetera, that's not an area we want to get into, but everybody's kind of largely ignored broadcast. The only people doing it are the incumbents, and they're not creating a product that's just for like digital from the ground up. They're basically exporting their analog product to digital. And we saw there being a big opportunity, especially as the connected car becomes mainstream, as things like Amazon Echo take over homes, Sonos, all these like home speaker systems where you don't need FM antennas anymore to get that, and we're like, nobody really built a product from the ground up for this new era on the digital radio front and we did it we basically you know it's all live radio traditional radio like like you've you know kind of grown up across but done in the right way and powered by the leading content creators in every sector so we power stations from everybody from snoop dogg to kylie jenner to the biggest k-pop label in the world yg entertainment you name it like the leaders in, in over 80 we have 80 stations right now all live, totally free, available anywhere. So it's what we think, you know, we think we've kind of cracked the code for what the future of this radio is going to become. Why take that bet? Mm-hmm. Right? Because, you know, yeah. it's it's interesting, like, because there's it's so many music platforms. For I sure. Can, I love, you know, I might argue with somebody over Spotify, like, oh, you, you use Spotify? You use yeah. iTunes. Like, why take that risk, you know, for and like sure. enter a uh, market that's relatively saturated? For sure. I mean, we look at it in, in a couple of different ways. I mean, people thought I was crazy when I left literally the biggest station in the country, Kiss FM, to, to quit and start something, start this new. But I think it's inev- inevitable that somebody does this. And when you look at the radio space, it's it's totally different than the music space. Like I always say, it used to be as, as a kid growing up, I'd listen to FM radio, hear a song I like, and then go buy the CD. I think that same thought process still holds true to digital, except those platforms are changing. Instead of hearing a terrestrial analog signal or even a serious an- uh, satellite signal, which you need like, expensive hardware and receivers and you have to shoot satellites in orbit to maintain, uh, hopefully you're going to listen to a platform hopefully like Dash. It's all free. It's about discovery. It's live DJs. that's heavily curated because one of the challenges on a lot of these services is digging. There's just too many options and you don't know where to start. And then on the other hand, you have the Spotify's and Apple's and, you know, look, I, I love those. I use Spotify. I have that. That's great if you know exactly what you want to hear. That's the evolution of the CD. If you pay 10 bucks a month, it's a paid service and mm-hmm. you get whatever you want on demand. And we don't think we really compete with that. There's a time when I hop in and I'm like, yo, I want to hear this album. And then there's a time where I'm like, I just want to hear, I wake up or I hop in my car. I'm right. like, I don't want to think about creating a playlist. I don't want it to just auto play the last thing I was playing. I kind of know the overall sound and feel, and I just want to hit play and join a community. So yeah. we're really targeting that radio sector that everybody's largely ignored in a weird way for this kind of digital era. They've all been focused on the, the streaming space, which is, like you said, overcrowded. Like we're late to the game. Like somebody else is gonna is gonna win that battle, but we think we have an opportunity to really own the radio world, which is you know, there's plus there's no global leader in that. Everything been has been territorialized to date. No, that's great because I, I think about the idea of choice versus curation, mm-hmm. right? Like you guys are curating, and you mentioned the list of individuals yeah. or partial list because that list is lengthy. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. right, <laughs> right? Um, of people who are curating stuff, and I think that's an important piece of it. Like even on Spotify, like I listen to a couple of artists playlists, yeah. but I think Dash is set up for that experience. As a matter of fact, the first time for sure I like put it in the you know my URL or my mm-hmm. browser, I was like, oh, like a jam came on, like it just kind of it was autoplay, and I listened to it for like you know a good couple of hours, like oh, this is. Is actually pretty consistent. That's what it is. You don't have to think. It's like what we've built is really trying to own the lean back experience at a time where everybody's trying to focus on like engagement and how Joe to get people. Back, right? <laughs> okay. I was like, we're just all Fat Joe all the time. A shout to Fat Joe. We're still <laughs> consistently through multiple eras staying on top. But um, yeah, it's, it's really like that time when you're in your car and you're, you're late. When you get home and you're just like, I want to hear turn up music. I want to hear club music. I want to hear something like soulful. Some, like you don't want to have to always think about a playlist. Again, there's a time and a place for that. It's like some Sometimes I know exactly what I want to watch on TV, but sometimes I just turn on ESPN. It's like the same thing for audio. How important was the celebrity-ish curation? For us, it's about finding great people that are leaders in their class, no matter what that is. And it can be everything. It's interesting the way that we approach it because 
we don't look at each channel as having just a celebrity or just a, a brand. Like some of ours are magazines. So we have XXL Magazine on the hip hop side. We have the individuals, obviously, like a Snoop or the, the Kylie radio, which we power. We have, you know, labels in certain instances, which might not make sense in other genres, but it does in K-pop when you have a brand like YG Entertainment that had Psy and pretty much own that world of mm-hmm. it. So it's kind of in every sector, there's somebody different or a collective like Odd Future, which makes sense for us. So it's not just one individual on that. So we've been like really you know focused on identifying the right talent in all of those different sectors so sometimes it is an individual that powers it sometimes it's a collective sometimes it's a brand sometimes it's a record label it really depends on on what it is well bridging the gap between you know the two the two worlds right the dash world and the ski world i think there's this you know thread at least in your career of doing a lot of work with brands Mm -hmm. right um like a lot trying to be like you (laughs) hey good luck um, you, you don't want you don't want that in your life. <laughs> you don't want you don't want this. Um, no, but and I think there's always this uh, mystic infatuation with let's get a celebrity to endorse our brand. Let's get a celebrity to yeah. do this. Let's a it's not it's either over, hugely grossly oversimplified or mm-hmm. grossly overcomplicated. Yes, um, you're absolutely right. So you know, kind of walk us through your experience and the things that have attracted you to, to go and work with and how some mm-hmm. of those things came about and maybe also even some of the methodology like hey guys come on to this new platform I'm DJ you know yeah. I'm Ski you remember me right yeah um, like what is that like you know the relationship and the where the ideas like develop and blossom from for sure I mean my background luckily when I moved out here it was more on the business side I moved out here because I made my name as a DJ but I wrote basically a marketing proposal to Steve Rifkin who was the CEO of Loud and, and Sony at the time on what I thought he was doing wrong with his label and he loved it so much Wait, how old were you at this time <laughs> when I sent it to him I was like 16 so okay. yeah. right. so, crazy we'll so, into that in a second. yeah so moved out here did that and ended up like before my DJ career took off and the real time I, I got noticed on the DJ side was when I was producing the stuff with game coming up with that but um, before that I was working on the industry side of things and was ended up running his marketing agency so I, I was like you know kind of blessed the way that my career path took place because before I got, I was always an artist, but before I got really known on that, I was working in the industry side. So I was able to understand what a lot of artists don't, where sometimes you'll just come to an artist and they're like, yeah, I'll do that. Just tell them, give me a billion dollars and I'll I'll tweet. I'm like, wait, it doesn't work that way. There's ROI. There's all these different sectors. Like I've been able to walk between kind of both sides of the world, which has been great. And that's kind of been, you know, one of my philosophies is always delivering things where everybody wins. The, The consumer has to win. You have to win. The brand has to win. Like nobody can be left out. It used to be, or for a lot artists and just people in general it can be about trying to just you know rob the bank it's like all right how much can we get and then it's Mm -hmm. like a one-off and then they don't really do anything and it doesn't work it doesn't work for for so many sectors so um we try to do things where every side wins and is happy and can kind of grow together and that's the philosophy and that's how we even started dash when we went to brands we we created this platform that we think made a lot of sense for everybody and gave them a huge new opportunity and when we go to brands we give them a true authentic way to communicate their message through a new medium to to their audience yeah, no, that that's that's great, and because it, it's always funny when you get this call, you know, it's like, oh, I called such and such, and they want fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, and then somebody else calls, and you know, same team, same office, like, oh, he's going to do it tomorrow. You know, and yeah. and <laughs> is, is it like? Man. What's that ecosystem like where you go from Man. favor to like give me a bunch of money and there's a balance? In, in, in <laughs> it's tough. I mean, that's one of the challenges, and that's what's you know. Uh, there's so many different layers sometimes too and that's where a lot of artists can hurt themselves because I mean there's even deals that I've done recently with artists that that are great but it's just their team that can blow it up for no reason like like hey this is Easy, like yo, you could do this, and it's very simple, and it's like it'll give you a lot of opportunity, and they just overcomplicate it, and people won't want to work with them again because of that. So a lot of times, people add too many layers. So it's important for artists and talent to kind of be hands on and know what's going on. I mean, it's great to have a rep and somebody that understands it, but I mean, I guess at the end of the day, it's about building a strong team, like it is with anything. Yeah. If you get people that know what they're doing and they're great, it can you know be super efficient and great. And if if not, it can you know you can shoot yourself in the foot. Do you find yourself uh, like being an educator? Right, like yeah, to, to either the brand or the artist, and it's like, hey, both long term play, not forget about the twenty k yeah. or whatever the the price yep. tag is, like. Long money, right? Yeah. Like, is that absolutely? I mean, that's the challenge, and that's what you know. When I was doing the marketing side, where I always put ourselves in the brand is like the brand has a message that they want to communicate. The artist has their own brand and, and a way to reach fans. You really have to kind of translate to both sides. Where you're like, you're going to the brand, like, hey, this is the right artist. They're going to do this authentic, blah blah blah, and kind of selling them on that. And at the same time, going to the artist, like, hey, this brand, you're going to have a lot of opportunity. So you kind of have to play, like, you know, you're pitching both sides and almost managing it. That's what's so important when you when you kind of come in as the middle when you're working with those brands because you really have to kind of get both sides to to agree and at the end of the day you just want to get that end result so 15 year old scott <laughs> yeah. 
um, Moneyapolis, as my cousin who lives yeah. there calls it. Um, do, does everybody call that, or is that just him? That's just him. I haven't okay. heard that, actually. He has a sweatshirt made and everything. I was like, awesome. Yeah, I need well, one of those. Yeah, you, you don't live there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> a little warmer. It's, it's like me in Detroit. It's like, <laughs> uh, well, I still, yeah. No, I went last year. Um, <laughs> I go back for my Vikings games, all of them. <laughs> what... I mean, that's an early age start, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you hear that and like stand up and, you know, like, oh, I was 15 on stage. Yeah. Like, um, what was 15 year old Scott thinking about at that time, you know, kind of getting his mm-hmm. feet wet in the in the music business? When I, I mean, when I started DJing, I knew like instantly that's what I was going to do. I think there was no doubt in, in my mind and, and I kind of just laser focused on it. I was like, I'm going to make it, like, I just wanted to be in the music business. I didn't know what it was going to be or how it was going to be. I always was DJing. I was like, this is just what I love. Like I found my passion and calling and just f- went all in on it. Like put all the chips at the what table. What was it that in. resonated with you? Like what was it that no you were idea. like? It was just once I got like turntables and records and started like spinning and like, I don't know. It was just that feeling and that yeah. love of music. I was like, this is what I'm, I'm going to do. Like yeah. done. This is, this is it. Forget everything else. Yeah. Um, and so a year later, yeah. <laughs> right? A year later, like, you know, I mean, this is a lot of balls, right? To be mm-hmm. like, I'm going to write a marketing plan and send it to, you know, Steve. Like, yeah. Was that like a, was that nepotism? Did you, was with, that Steve Riffick and your, your uncle? Or? With Steve, no, with Steve, it was funny because the way I made my money in high school, I was never, uh, I never worked like a real job. I was just, I always had it like looking back at it like a real entrepreneurial spirit. So I'd have my friends that would all work at maybe Best Buy or somewhere. I'd pay them 20 bucks to tell me when at the time it was the PS2 and the Xbox One, or the first Xbox that came out. I'd pay them to tell me when their shipments would come in and I'd go and, and basically buy all that I could and use that money and sell them on eBay for double, use that money and buy more. And one of my friends that was a DJ was meeting with Steve Rifkin about one of his artists and he happened to need it. He was like, it was right before Christmas and Steve was like, I need a PlayStation 2 for Alex, for, for his son, for, for Christmas. And does anybody know her? And he's like, yeah, I got this little kid I work with in Minnesota that's selling. I'm like, you want, he's like, yeah, yeah. So he's like, hey, Steve Rifkin wants a PlayStation. And I was like, yeah, I'll hook him up. Sure, whatever he wants. So kind of used that as my foot in the door. And a few months later, I was like, hey, Steve, I got some ideas. Like, Can I, do you mind if I shoot him over? He's like, go for it. And at the time, to me, the coolest thing ever would have just be get like a Wu-Tang Clan shirt or like a Mob Deep shirt or things. <laughs> like that's all I wanted. I went like my ultimate dream, like start a street team in Minnesota. Like that would have been the coolest thing <laughs> ever for me. And Steve loved it so much. He's like, hey, can you come to New York and meet with me next week? So I'm like... Yeah, sure. So, ditch school, high school one day. Were you an orphan? Like, your parents were like, oh, yeah, go to meet with this regular. (laughs) They were like, I mean, they they were, luckily, like, they were encouraging. They were like, yeah, sure, go for it. Like, you know, you don't, it's, it's, you're meeting to see, like, somebody so senior in that. How could I, how could I say no? So he's like, hey, would you, why don't you come work for me? And, you know, luckily in that proposal, I talked about a lot of digital things. And it was right before the, this was like, you know, what, 2000, 2001. So right when the internet was starting to take off, but people didn't understand it yet, especially the music industry. So, Steve, like, luckily I was at the right place at the right time and I guess wrote Steve about the right things and just made the jump. I was like, it's the worst that could happen. Before I was planning on going to, like, college and just living, like, you know, going through the normal plans and stuff, but got that opportunity and ended up working, luckily. Uh, you don't have any PS4s on you, do you? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> okay, all right, just double check. <laughs> um, so, you know, obviously, fast forward, is, uh, Halo, Xbox, Google, Nike, Chrysler, yeah. the Lakers, Crazy. you know, um, why do people come to you? Like, what's the, what's the ski magic? I don't know. Um, no, I think it's just, for me, it's really about, like, with everybody that I work with, if you, if you look at the history, it's all brands that I'm, like, you know, that I use and, and really love. That's what I'm big about. Like, Nike, you're talking about Nike. Like, I have 2,000 pairs of shoes. You're talking about Xbox. It's the reason I'm out here selling Xboxes and video games and things. So it's things that I actually really know and understand. And You know, I'm not going to jump in an area that that I don't, completely, you know, understand or believe in. And I think that's why it works because I, I understand those products and those brands from, from a bigger perspective outside of just getting a check. So, um, I've been able to, you know, I work with things that I'm passionate about, which kind of really bleeds over, I think, into the work. What pisses you off? <laughs> oh, uh, and I ask because you're like you're so like cool and calm and collected, but you're also like there's a yeah. like a, a brooding energy in you. Yeah, I think it's just when people don't execute what they say they're going to do. Like, just do what you're going to do, and if you can't, all good. Just don't say you're going to do it. It's just not coming through or not being. You know, just do what you say you're going to do. It's so important. And if you can't, all good. Just say you can't do it. 
Uh, along those lines, you know, on uh, Ski TV, you had these red pill moments, which yeah. was kind of like your Jerry Springer. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I wanted to show there was more substance than me just being a DJ. So why did, why was that important? Because to me, you know, I didn't want to just be like a talking head personality, and I was, it was interesting because um, I've been writing columns and doing things online for a long time, and I wanted to figure out how to convey it in the show. And when we first started doing it, I was like, nobody's going to want to watch this. Like, I was really nervous about putting it on, but our, our team encouraged us, and it became one of like the most talked about things. On, on social every time like when people would see that because um, I think that really resonated with the message and for me it was important to show myself as more than just a DJ I think going back to what we talked to earlier it was really like hey I do have thoughts on, on different things and, and more than just this box that sometimes people try to label me within it's interesting because you think about like personal brand management mm-hmm. right is, that's mm-hmm. a, I mean it's kind of like the the thread thus far um, I watched your interview with Post Malone oh it was, yeah it was his first interview his first ever interview that's it, to me look I, like I'm a huge Post Malone fan like mm-hmm. that album has been on heavy rotation Shout since to Post, it dropped yeah. um, but in the in, in most interviews he doesn't come off as, as an intelligent person yeah right um do you? Uh, I'm gonna go back to this sort of mentorship kind of mm-hmm. role. Like, do you find yourself like helping people manage their personal brands and like, and identifying that one thing that they can own? Like, if you want to own the philo- the philosophical moments, yeah. that's you. But maybe somebody else owns politics. Uh, you know, like you know, that's a uh, what's it? Uh, Killer Mike uh, yeah. owns politics. Yeah, right? for sure. Um, do you ever find yourself in that mentorship kind of capacity? Look, absolutely. I always try to help artists because. At the end of the day, if I help them and they're successful, then it always comes back twofold. I mean, I guess it's like that with with anybody. So um, there's definitely, especially when people are breaking into the business and doing things and seeing things for the first time, I always try to be a voice of reason, especially now that's somebody that's a, that's a veteran that's been there and seen a lot of things and seen artists, you know, do the right things and the wrong things in certain moments and you do their help or, or crush their careers. So uh, definitely try to help people whenever they can. I don't try to go out just unsolicited and like, you know, push my agenda or push my thoughts on it. Cause look, what I always say is like, listen to me, but this is what worked for me. It might not work for, for you. Just my thing with everything is learn as much as you can, but then make your own decision. Cause at the end of the day, it's going to be up to you and no two stories are the same. What worked for Bill Gates isn't going to work for me. Of course, like I'd want to take his advice and listen to what he's done because he's done it and been successful. But at the same time, you can't just follow that same path because it might not work for you. So yeah. um, and try to always be there for artists, but let them, you know, and just give them as much information as possible. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, and I find like the, the one thing that resonates on this show is that, you know, in a lot of interviews, we kind of get into like the personal history of an individual. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that kind of helps the put the the creative output in a yeah. different context, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, you did that because yep. this. Not, not, not you did something that I can mimic and do also, Yeah, <laughs> right? It's yeah. like, what's that personal connection thing you have, right? Mm-hmm. And then just kind of sticking with the Post Malone example, like whether it's biracial in Texas and like whatever yeah. he grew up with, like that becomes something he can manifest at a, at a later date. Mm-hmm. I don't have a point there. I was just like no, absolutely. pontificating. Yeah, no, it's great. You like it? You like I it? love it, dude. <laughs> um... How do you filter? Because, uh, again, you have, like, a, a great capacity. Uh, like, I was looking at your Instagram, and it's like, in the past two days, it was StockX, and there's <laughs> Ghost Recon, yeah. and, you, you know, you talk like, your shoe collection, mm-hmm. and you got the music. So, and I'm sure there's a dozen, like, two dozen other things that come your way that, or mm-hmm. that you get excited about. Um, how do you go about making those business decisions where you spend your energy, time, and passion? It's a, it's a challenge, and that's something that you always kind of have to, you know, um decide on. And, and for me, it's like, you know, I think when you start off, you try to do as much as possible just because you want to learn and take in everything. And then you kind of realize as you get older, you start cutting things down to really focus on what you're you're passionate about, what you're excited about, and what you can really, you know, I guess is most beneficial for you. So for me, um, everything that I try to do, it has to be, I mean, first off, it has to be something that I believe in and it's fun and that, you know, I want to get involved in. Like, again, you're talking about shoes and, and video games, two of the last deals that I, that I talked about are, you know, my partnership with StockX and helping and investing in them and doing the whole music and soundtrack for Ghost Recon. Like, Ghost Recon's a game that I've played. StockX is a site that I buy stuff on. So it just made sense. It's part of those natural... Part of everything that I do. It's not like I'm going out and, you know, becoming a chef or starting a restaurant because right. I don't know anything about cooking. So, like, right. that, like it, it's it's very natural to what I know in, in my brand. But the challenge is that you only have so many hours in the day and you have to focus on those things. And that's why, for me, I focus so much of my energy right now. My, my primary thing is, is Dash just because we have such massive potential it's had uh such incredible metrics to date and then you know the the year and a half basically that we've been formally up it 
if I focus my energy on other things, I mean, this is a multi-billion dollar opportunity for whoever nails it. Um, and we're kind of in the leader seat for that right now. So that's really my prime focus. Everything else that I do too has to, you know, allow that to kind of be first and foremost and, and fit naturally within it where I'm not going to be, you know, pressing to do other things and, and really sacrificing a ton of time on. Is there such thing as too soon? You know, absolutely. I mean, we've seen it so many times. There's been so many artists that I've come along for every time that I've played a, you know, a Kendrick, a Gaga, a Bieber, a Post. There's probably 10 other artists that were, you know, equally as talented in a lot of respects for that. They just, the timing wasn't right. The team wasn't right. There, there's different reasons for that, but timing is everything. I mean, yeah, I think even if you look at companies, like with what we're doing with Dash, if we did this five years ago, it'd be way too early. If we did this five years from now, we'd be way too late. I, right. I, I, I hope we're hitting the right time right now, but uh, I mean, timing is one of those key things. Yeah. Uh, how many people are on Dash right now? Right now where you have 300 DJs across 80 stations. So, wow. Yeah. Uh, and how many people, how many users? Seven million monthly. So, okay. Yeah. So, startup. It's, it's grown. Yeah. Good it's luck. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been been crazy. Um, I think you know another another trait I, I I believe you you have or exhibit or you know um, the way you're able to get a lot of stuff done. Mm-hmm. Uh, the word I wrote down was respect. Right. Yeah. Um, there is a lot of I would imagine there's a lot of respect, and that's why people will go like. Yes, I will work. I will rock with Dash. I don't know what it is. I don't yeah, know. It's true. That, I mean, that's how I make any started, money or yeah. not, right? <laughs> yep. Um, like, what's Ski's take on respect? I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, if I was to start Dash, being a, an 18 year old out without you know my my kind of brand and stuff that I'd built just within the industry and things and, and all that, like, I don't think it would be what it was because I was able to go out and. You know, put together this kind of crazy vision, and we built an incredible team. It's it's way more than just me, but within that, when I was going out and pitching the people, like the even the Odd Futures and and all these brands and DJs and talent that we have, um, a lot of it was because they believed in me and they knew that I did good business. Everything over the years, like you can, I'm like, look, ask around. You can you know see what my reputation is. Like, luckily, I've been able to build something that's always been. Uh, I guess stayed true to it. I don't have like, you know, I haven't screwed people over. I've always been very extremely fair with people and, you know, tried to do things the right way. So I think that really kind of paid itself back in full because people were willing to jump on and kind of take this experiment in. And and since then, now it's the other way around. Now everybody's calling us. So, but definitely the foundation and the start was impacted by, you know, my work over the years. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember this, but we encountered each other probably twelve years yeah, ago. Yeah, it's like crazy. Well, not, no, maybe TV. I can't. Yeah, like it was. Yeah, it was the Playboy yeah, and the yeah. Hype TV. Um, thank you for that mixtape. I never. Yeah, got, that's right. <laughs> didn't get to send that email, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Dude, no worries. <laughs> That was a good one too. That was no, it was great. But, it, but it, I, I say that because you talk about that work experience, right? Like, yeah. we, you know, we were a fledgling network, and like we were trying to get the same thing, like calling in favors, getting yeah. people to do stuff, and like totally came through. So it's like here you are, you know, yeah. uh, fast forward, you. still, still same old ski. Yep, exactly. Um, let's talk about the ski team. Yes, uh, is there one? Oh yeah, <laughs> of course. Because you don't do all this stuff by yourself, do you? Hell no. I mean, I thought I do. I've interviewed a couple people who were like, it's just me. You know, wow. it's just me, like uh, me, uh, me, or me and an assistant, and like that's wow. it. That's awesome. Um, but like, what's the what's the ski team like? I mean, we have over thirty employees now at Dash, so um, and and growing fast. Like we're we're understaffed as is with that. Like we're pulling off some some miracles. Like, when you look at what we've done with the, the limited resources that we've had and the numbers that we've put up, the talent that we've signed, the distribution deals that we have throughout all these vehicles and, and everywhere else. You know, I'm really proud of uh, of our team for for able to really pull this off and rocking with us and believing in this crazy idea for the, for the, from the beginning so um businessman curator tall guy <laughs> what's uh what's your favorite hat to wear hat my minnesota either probably my minnesota twins one not that hat <laughs> I, know, I'm with you. I love running the, uh, I love running, you know, I love creating things. I think that's really, when you look at it with it, whatever it is, whether it's music and business, it's not like a specific position. I think, um, really creating things from the ground up. The funnest time to me is even like, even when we're launching dash sitting in a dungeon, like putting together with like four people and like, we're just going to figure out a way to make this work and yeah. creating something. It's sitting in the studio with an artist for, with nothing there and starting up and putting together, you know, soundtrack or a full mixtape or whatever that is. So I love the creative process and watching, some, building something from zero to, to, to something. What was the hardest part you had to learn, right? Because I'm the same way. Like, I love like, oh, let's think of something mm-hmm. like, oh, nobody's done it this way. And like, what if we did? I know a guy who can do that. Yeah. Um, and then I'm like, oh, wait, uh, you, you want me to manage what? Taxes. I don't want to, I don't want to do taxes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like what, like what's the one part that was like the, the bane of your existence? You um, know? 
it's tough. I mean, the thing the, the thing that sucks, especially as you step up and, and run companies, is really when you're CEO, you're really also like a therapist, and you have to deal with all the problems and all the you know not so fun things that you know come along with the territory. And when uh, you know, my goal is like I just want to focus on the cool things and, and building that out. So I think it's you know but when there's a herpes outbreak in the office. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, luckily to... we haven't had that yet. Okay. but you you never know. Well, let me come to the office. I'll, I'll get it started. <laughs> I think you're good. Um, <laughs> we think, but yeah, I think it's like you know, really. Learn, I mean, you t- you serve as like a therapist, and especially with, with our, a team like that in a startup, it's really like a, a family environment. So um, just making sure everybody's there. Not that it's bad, but it can be frustrating when you want to focus on other things and constantly get pulled back to to other things. You ever like. You just need to watch Red Pill number six. <laughs> I should, right? I'm going <laughs> to like, start because a lot of the problems, I mean, look, the same problems that people typically have. So that's actually not a bad idea. I might steal that. No, it's, but it's, uh, how important is that to you to like to, to do that emotional care for your team? Because I, I mean, that's key to, yeah. to running. I mean, you have to do that. You can't ignore those things. You can't ignore those things when you have businesses and, and other things out there like that's you know that's what your business is you're only as strong as your people especially when you're trying to build something so big nobody one person can't build a, a massive company especially for at least for what we're doing could, there's no way one person could no matter who you are right. so it's it's important to have a right team and keep it happy because otherwise you could falter your creative inputs especially in building something like a uh, dash mm-hmm. right it's a lot of technology you have to be well aware of connected cars yeah. and what amazon's doing and yeah. you know google home and like all these other things that are out there like oh there's a, something's happening oh, yeah. and like i don't know how much you under, you understand like back end of that stuff or how yeah. much you had to like come up to speed in building a dash like uh, what was that like yeah i mean luckily i've always had like i've always been so interested in knowing every element of how business works and how everything kind of comes together so from the moment that i even got in the the business, I guess, I was always trying to learn as much as I could. And that, that includes from even like on the accounting side and all that. So kind of my philosophy is learning enough about every area where you know what you're talking about, but also at the same time, um, I guess not trying to, to do it all, finding people that are better than you at every different sector. So yes, I know the basic things of accounting and, you know, I've read like, like boring accounting books and yeah. stuff. Like I know all those things. I know how to set up a business and all that, but I'll still go to, to hire the best lawyers to do that. I, I understand how to build, like I used to code HTML and stuff. So I understand the fundamentals of coding in that, but I'll find the best coders that I can get. But at the same time, I know how to speak the language. So I'm not just like, yeah, make this do that or, right, or whatever, right. like I can kind of understand the foundation, whether you're spot- Not that color blue, <laughs> you know? a different color blue. Because it's so important because right. then when I go to my lawyers or whatever, and, and, and there's certain things you, A, you can save money because you don't need them for every little detail. But at the same time too, you have a context and you understand what the kind of rules are. And then you go to them for their expertise on, in the area of every field. So that's kind of my philosophy. I try to know a little bit about everything as, as much as possible and in terms of the way that we, our systems and businesses run. So um, I can communicate the most efficiently across all those channels. Are you like? Uh, are you infatuated with the learning process, or like? I don't know. I, like, I get a little bit of like pride when I'm like, okay, I can talk to you a little bit about coding. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and one guest put it in the context of like, know enough to be dangerous, but yeah. you know, or or to have an intelligent conversation for sure. Um, but you also have to just be like a natural, curious kind of person Absolutely. to even pay attention right? for sure. That's really what it was. I mean, like, I, I just love learning things and even like seeing how different things work. Every situation I go to, or even when I hop in, like with an Uber driver, I'm like, hey, how do you like this? How's the business? What do you think? What, Uber or Lyft? Like, I'm always like just curious and how things there, just because I like knowing that. And, yeah. and it comes a long way for me. So, uh, does anything keep you up at night, or do you sleep like a baby? Um, I always wake up early. I always like wake up in the middle of the night, just thinking on different like problems or different, you know, things that were you know business ideas or opportunities or deal points or strategies. So that's the only thing that really keeps me up. <laughs> nice. Um, so you've seen a lot, right? I mean, you, yeah, you talked about a lot, a lot of cool bit. things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, who shot who? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> snitching on the air. No, um, uh, the show is called Innovation Crush. Yes. What have you seen that you're currently crushing on? What's something out there that you're like, oh my gosh, that's the most amazing thing ever? I mean, everybody's talking about the artificial intelligence kind of revolution that's coming on. So I think that's intriguing. I've been talking about like the automated vehicle systems, like just the concept of that for, since I was a kid, like I'm glad it's like, I was like, why don't they just have Night Rider was out. Yeah. I was like, why don't they just have like grids and every car communicates to each other and tells each other when to stop. I mean, it's obviously coming out in a different form, but I'm glad all those things are kind of coming to to fruition just because I think it's going to free a lot of things up. Um, There's an interesting company I heard about that I was talking to today that basically is making this home kit where you, um, it finds what vitamins you're deficient on and it makes them on the spot for whatever yes. you need right there. Neutrogene? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know all these. Uh, okay. Come on, man. 
You're wow. Scott, who that's you so, talking to? Wow. All right. Cool. So like three D printed. <laughs> I don't even know if they're 3D. It's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> you're, you're, that's why I'm here. So you're, you're on top of your shit for sure. So, um, uh, yeah, I think there's, you know, that's something. I'm trying to think of what else. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm backing StockX. I love the stuff that they're doing. Um, there's so much stuff, cool stuff out no, there. No, that's great. Uh, I just wanted to get a, a yeah. sense of, of yeah. where, you're, where you're, your head is. Um, as we wind down, mm-hmm. uh, take all those. Deep breath, you know. Yo- yoga. Do you do any that sort of like? I need to do more of it. Okay. I do. Tr- I do try to do like yoga occasionally and stuff. I used to do it more. I, I need to get back into it. I felt what's a lot the good What's the one thing it. you do for you, or is it like, or your is your day to day? You're like the thing that you love most, or is it like? A- I mean, yeah, it's my life because otherwise yeah. I, I wouldn't do it. But I still like you know Minnesota sports fan, true and true. So I still go and DJ all the Vikings games. I still go and you know we'll go to the big Timberwolves games. I still, like sports are kind of a release for me. Um, traveling. One of the key things though that I've learned is that I, I I'm one of those people that has to get like my sleep to be efficient when I don't get enough sleep then I'm useless basically for the day like I wish I wish I was one of those people that could sleep like an hour a night and then get back to work and stuff like it's called cocaine <laughs> 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 that's true yeah <laughs> it's very true but um I, I I'm like I need my like at least like seven hours of sleep every night to be effective if I get less like I've learned like if I get less than that then my body runs down I get sick I'm not as efficient in the office my brain wanders like a lot of people are like oh you sleep when I die but I'm like no I like I wish I could be that like I just have to get my, my sleep. And, and I've really tried to, over the past couple of years, make sure that I always make that a priority. So not taking a red-eye flight sometimes, sometimes losing different opportunities or, you know, planning different things around that. But it's I think it's, you know, made me a lot more productive. Well, it's, also, uh, that's, it's something to be said in the ability to embrace your, you know, deficiencies or the yeah, things you can't for sure. do. I w- look, I wish some people can get away with doing, you know, with four or five hours of sleep and being fine or getting in a red-eye. I'm just not one of those people. And I know what I, you know, I know what... Works for me. No, I'm saying, but like, look, I had to, I had to have something to uh, New York by like the start of the New York day. Yep. Um, I got home at like eight, and yeah. I was like. I'm not working. I I don't do well when I work late nights. Yeah. Like between eight it is and twelve, what it is. you can yeah. forget about it. Yeah. Um. But I will. I don't mind getting up at four, four thirty, yeah. and like tackling it then. And like I took my two hours and like zip do. right through it. Sometimes you need to clear your head like that. So a hundred percent. So it's important to do that. It's important. Like even in the winter, like I try to break away at least a couple times a month and go just you know go skiing and stuff and get on the slopes and it's just refreshing and like a mental like recharge. Do you for go you. skiing? I go skiing. Ski. Yeah. Bad joke. <laughs> exactly. Look, it's funny. So here, here's <laughs> no. a short story behind that. So I used to like always DJ like X Games and all these different mm. like outdoor outdoor events, snowboarding and skiing. And um, I would always want to go on the mountain, but would never have time because I'd go there literally DJ and then like be on a flight back. So a couple of years ago, I made it a point like, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go out there and do this. And they're like, do you want to ski or snowboard? And I was like, well. I don't really have a choice, <laughs> do I? <laughs> so ended up becoming a, a skier. Nice. Um, Last but not least, yes. uh, complete this phrase for me. Innovation to me is pushing the boundaries and finding a way to kind of remix things that are always out there. I don't think there's any, I mean, just with where we are in time, there's not going to be any ideas that are truly original. There's the likelihood that somebody's thought of pretty much everything. It's how you interpret those and go out and execute those. So innovation is kind of marrying your the concepts with, with execution and remixing, you know, uh, previ- you know, and mixing different ideas together to come up with something new. I think all your, uh, like all your company, the, all your endeavors, all the mm-hmm. videos should start off. Bam, 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 bam. And then and it's just like, yeah. still leave me. <laughs> that's awesome, right? <laughs> That'd be, that's actually, I should have done that. That would be great branding. You just call it bam, 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 bam Productions. <laughs> that would have been awesome. That would have been great. Um, well, thank you. Where can people find, join your 490,000 Instagram followers? Yeah, Where can everything, they find you? Everything is DJ Ski from Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, you, you name it. Dashradio.com, uh, available everywhere inside Amazon, Echoes, Cars, of course, apps, anywhere you hear audio. Swaggy. Thank yeah. you so much. Dude, thank you. This was great. No, I'm glad you made it, man. Thank you so much. Dude, anytime. Everyone, uh, this has been another installment of Innovation Crush, and we will talk to you next time. 